Hey everybody, how you folks doing tonight? It is Sunday. Just checking to make sure my sounds, yep, it's awesome. Okay, we're doing a little bit of a Sven Zone solo. Solo skirmish, action going on, the cult of Molgoraz. That's right. Uh, I am playing a Hippo Don Warrior Paladin. Um, he's a Paladin and he's from Whimsical Heroes Races by Robin Nix, available in DMs Guild. Check it out. Lots of really cool, well balanced races, all different types of anamorphic creatures. Uh, for those of you who want a little bit of flavor, flavor in your game, I'm also playing a Halfling, Slinger, Ranger, um, and by the way, my Fion, my Hippo, Hippodon, is a uh, Oath of Conquest Paladin. The Solo Skirmish, also available on Gim uh, DM's Guild, uh, converted by um, Rob's team, Marmet, Marmoset. Flamer Z212. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, check it out on DM's Guild. So those of you who are have been following along, first of all, thank you. Um, if you haven't and you want to, check out the other six streams on the YouTubes. Um, but those of you who've been following along are like, hey man, what happened to Thoradin, your faithful follower? Well, as it so happens, your followers only last for the quest. So now that we have finished that third quest, and our, uh, the second quest, and we are getting ready to go on to our third quest, then our followers go away. One other quick note for those of you who are taking notes on how to use this solo campaign. I did make a mistake. I know. I'll wait while you get over your shock. But you can only have one follower at a time and for like two or three rounds I had a dog and Thor done until the dog got killed so I should only have had the one anywho um, I, I those of you who passed your perception check have noticed hey man you got the introduction up here why do you have the introduction open and to you who passed your perception I say good job Nice roll. So uh, I have this up because I wanted to show you where we are in the overall scheme of things. So in this campaign, there are five separate quests. And each quest is divided into three locations. So far, I've done we've done the Devilish Dilemma, and we've done Kron's Stragglers. So now we are getting ready to start the search of Shardaz. We are level three. We are pumped, we are excited, and ready to go. Here we are. Nice nice little... Uh, I'm mistaken the rules in a board game in D&D. &D, I know. Um, uh, I should have read it a dozen more times and had it all memorized. So never make a mistake. I'm going to have to re-record that entire episode now so that nobody knows that I've ever made a mistake. So this is part of the little dice pile. It's a nice little illustration that's included in there, by the way. All right. So if you want to know more specifics on how, how all how this works, check out some of the earlier ones, um, or just go buy it and check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's very easy. Fancy grounds. If I was not using fancy grounds, there would be a lot of tables, and you'd be flipping back and forth and doing lots of rolls, trying to figure out different things for all the encounters and locations. Blah blah blah. FantasyCon makes all that stuff really easy and nice and smooth. Um, so, first of all, it says, In Search of Shardaz. Arriving at the city of Marsember, in the northern shore of the Lake of Dragons, you set about finding the sorceress Shardaz. Perhaps she can set some light on this bizarre document you retrieved from Tarak the Ruthless. 
he wasn't that ruthless. We kicked his butt pretty fast. But that's okay. That's what happens when the dice are on your side. So location one, the Cloven Shield. Dot, dot, dot. It's going to take two quest points to leave this area. We're going to make sure that our visibility is gone. Um, and by the way, so as you, if you're keeping track at home, like I said, there are th different quests, and each level, uh, each quest is a different level. And pretty much the way to keep track of things is things will travel over from location to location within each quest. But as you move to the next quest, everything resets. So you get a long rest, all your he you're fully healed, um, but your followers go away, any quest points you've earned go away, your threat tracker clears out, all that stuff resets. Um, so that's something just to keep in mind in the back of your head. The Cloven Shield Tavern is just the right sort of place to hear rumors and information. Perhaps you'll pick up some clues that will allow you to find Shardaz the Sorceress. But you're just as likely to get knifed by a drunk halfling or poisoned by a Zentarum agent. So, we go to the location. The first location is the Cloven Shield. There are three different phases that you would have to do. Right here is your quick reference sheet. Um, there's the location phase, the encounter phase, the hero phase, and then the threat phase. But again, I don't have to do all the roles. You just click on the bottom right here where it says generate and poof, like magic. There it is. Now what I do is what this actually does is it makes a story location for you. Um, so because this is unique, every time you click that generate button, I put Sven. Take one. So far, I've only had one take two. Um, I've been able to do it once and, and only one time every time, except for last the last quest I had. I was lost in a barren desert for two turns. It was very annoying. I almost lied, died. And that was the, almost the end of our quest at that point. Had I not passed it the second time, it would have been done. All right, so let's see what happens. So... First of all, both the characters roll to see something that happened to them at this location. So we're going to start with Fion, since he's on top. And it says, character one, roll one, sidekick. You gain Ricklin as a sidekick. Cool. That's nice. Oh, nice surprise. So let's find out what Ricklin is. What's a Ricklin, man? Does Ricklin have an image? Let's see. Go to our images, Rick. Oh, oh, look at this, look at this. There it is, look at that. There's Rick Lin, da, da, da. I'm excited. Boom, sidekicks are nice. To me, it makes you a little overpowered, but hey, I'd rather be overpowered than dying all the time. You know what I'm saying? Not what I mean, not what I mean, not what I mean. All right, so what you do is you just drag him over to the combat tracker. Boop. There he is. Right now he's listed as an enemy, so you click the little skull to make him faction. Uh, you could make him friendly as well. Um, he's not really neutral, he's more, more your friend. Uh, but there's a reason I'm not doing that. It has to do with my overlay that you see if I own Torador and my stream setup. Um, normally I would make him friendly. It doesn't affect anything during combat, so either way it works. And then, well, let's check him out, man. Let's check him out. So, Ricklin is a small halfling. Neutral good. Pretty decent. Uh, 14 armor class. Uh, hit Only 11 hit points. That's okay. A little squishy. But they have acrobatics, investigation, perception, and stealth. Nice. So they are an expert sidekick. Um, so there are three different types of sidekicks, experts, spellcasters, and warriors. So she's an expert, basically like a thief-ish individual. Um, so they have double proficiency for that. They're helpful. They can give you the, uh, the help as a bonus action. So that's nice. And 
she can do the dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus, and she's lucky because she's a halfling. Uh, oh, it's he. Okay, well, that's a weird-looking he. All right. So it's he. Uh, who am I to judge, man? If he wants to identify as a he, that's fine. Short bow, short sword. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So I'm going to go ahead and drop him down into one of my hot keys down here. Boop. There he is. So now I'll have access to him whenever I want. All right. Well, good job, Fion. Way to pull your weight. Number two, dice game. Okay, so again, we just click this, and it tells us what's going on. So this is Torador, our halfling. A favorite game of dice is underway in one corner of the bar. This is a chance for you to increase your gold. The game is called Going to Water Deep. A stake is put down. Usually 50 gold pieces, although if you succeed at a persuasion roll, you can up the stake to 100 gold. And it's played with three dice. First, you roll all three dice, keeping the highest one aside. Then roll the remaining two dice, keeping either both or just one, whichever is highest. And then you roll the last. The idea is to make the highest possible total. Your opponent will play against you three times, if you wish, or if you, you may play just once. His three scores are already listed. If you lose, your stake gold is gone. If you win, take twice the gold staked. Cool. All right, Torador, let's do this, man. So we're going to start with 50 gold. And let's clear out our chat. Just type slash clear as a DM, and it'll clear out the chat. So first, roll all three dice. It doesn't say what flavor dice. I could roll percentile. <laughs> oh, so funny. I'm pretty sure he's talking about six siders. So we're going to presume it's six siders. Because that would make the most sense. All right. Boom. 15. Bam. Look at that. Why didn't it record? No. Man. That's frustrating. Okay. But hey, it's all just a game, man. Just relax. Calm down. All right. So first of all, roll all three dice. Keeping the highest one aside. Two. Then roll the remaining two dice. Keeping either both or just one, whichever is the highest. Okay. So we go click. Click. Four and three. So we have two and four, which is six. So I have to get a six to tie. Three. So two, four, three, sadly, is not enough. So we lose 50 gold. All right. So his three scores... Um, so we're going to try one more, try again. We're going to do all three. Of course, we're going to do all three. Um, and the last one, we're going to see if we can go higher. So here we go. One, two, three. Let's clear this out. Dude, really? All right, here we go. Click. By the way, to do this, you just left click, hold it, then you right click to add two more. And then I go into in the chat bar. 652, there we go. So it says, then roll the remaining two dice, keeping either both or just either, both or just one. Okay. Um, six and five, so we're going to keep the six and the five and roll just one. four. So then you roll a last die again if I wanted to. So six and five is 11 plus four is 15. I have to get a 16. So we're going to roll that last one one more time. 
Come on, five or six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 12 plus 5 is 17. We beat it 16, so we get our 50 gold back. So now we're even. So now we're going to try our 14 persuasion to see if we can't persuade him to up to Annie. Why not, man? Come on, dude. Ooh, I have a zero persuasion. 20. Boom. Nailed it. All right. So we're playing for 100 gold. We got our six and our five again, so we're just going to roll the two. Boom. And a six. Woohoo! We make a hundred gold. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And the game says we only play three times, so we're done. But we got a hundred gold. Yeah. So let's go to our party sheet. Click. That's the little symbol over here with the little dudes. We come over here to our inventory. And we're going to do 101, because I, already st I started with 1. So that means I now have 101. Poof. There we go. We have a crap ton of gold. Um, next time we get, we get a chance, we will go ahead and try to um, spend some of that, you know? All right. So back to character 1. Fion. Still in the tavern. He's chilling with Ricklin. They're talking, hanging out, pounding some brewskis, eating some chow. A friendly canine is doing the rounds, offering its head for pats, licking faces, and generally getting to know everyone here. Seems to have lost its master and wants to find someone who can latch it who we can latch onto. If your class allows it, you may want to take this hound as a companion. So, Torridor's class does allow it. Um, however, as I just mentioned at the top of the stream, you cannot have two sidekicks. So, sadly, we cannot have this one. Um, although, one could argue that says the the hound will stay with you until the end of the next encounter phase so it would be just for the next fight if there is a fight so we could argue that this isn't really a sidekick but the other argument is since Fiona is the one who found it and a paladin can't ha doesn't have companions so six half doesn't know the other point is not going to take this town the hound but just for curiosity if we did do it we could roll and it would be either in this case, it would have been a dire wolf. So, pretty cool to find a dire wolf wandering through a bar. What the heck? There's got to be a good story behind that. You know what I'm saying? All right, last one is Torador. Shady looking characters doing the rounds. Okay, we, we have dogs doing the rounds, shady characters doing the rounds. What is up with people doing rounds in this bar? Sitting next is likely looking patrons and attempting to sell them substances that aren't exactly on the menu. Ooh, remember I just said we need to spend some of this money? Huh, huh? You may pay 50 gold for a vial of yellowish liquid. Why does it have to be yellow? Everybody knows it's urine. You were thinking it. I was thinking it. I'm just putting it out there. Silos Cybane. This liquid can be coated on a weapon or a piece of ammunition. It is good for a single application, and on a hit, the target has to make a save or be under the effects of the drug for the entire combat. That's pretty cool. If a piece of ammunition misses, the substance is wasted. If a melee attack misses, then on a next successful hit, Oh, the, the effect will occur on the next successful hit. Okay. So, what is the effect? Hmm. Let's find out. Whenever a creature is affected by this substance makes an attack, they must first roll a wisdom save. And on a fail, they attack an ally. Or if there are no allies, they waste their action doing nothing. That's pretty darn cool for 50 bucks. 
Heck yeah, I will take that. So, we go to our potty sheet. Um, I can't change it there, actually. I'll have to go to my own. So, this is the first time I have found that... I mean, uh, this is Twitter. The first time I have found that Fancy Grounds has let me down. Dudes, you failed. You're supposed to have this in a parcel. So, 427 is 377. So, we're just going to make a quick... Create new item. Right-click in the inventory. Create a new item. And open it up using the symbol. It is silos sidebane. The non ID name is yellow liquid. Don't forget the air quotes. Type. I want to say it's potion. It might be adventuring gear. I don't want to take the time to look it up and, and make it exactly everything like it. So, um, actually, I think I've got a potion of healing here. Let's take a look. It is adventuring gear. See, I do know what the heck I'm talking about. All those years of playing. Come in handy every once in a while. This thing is going to be rare. Cost. Pretty gold, baby. Wait. Wait. <laughs> See what I did there. Alright, so we're going to um, go ahead and if I can move it, there it is. So now all we do is just simple unlock this and then highlight all this. Boom. Boom. So, I would, if, the, if I was playing this in a campaign or something, I would go ahead and code it, put it on my actions page, and uh, make a special code for it. Um, but right now, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Very cool, very cool. All right, so we are all finished with that. A random counter is triggered. Find the battle map for the current location and spawn the required enemas. All right, so we have two tugs. So first of all, those of you who know me, what am I gonna say, huh? What am I gonna say? That's right, we need to find a better token for our to hugs, open up our ass ets. And here's a thug right here, man. We have a couple different thugs. First of all, we have to unlock it. Click. Boom. What is up with this thug, man? Looks like it's an undead. It's a broken neck. Anyway, so now we have our thugs and, and our, our tokens for our thugs. Close it. Now we open up the map. Boop. All right. So, first of all, we will go ahead and turn off the line of sight. I don't think it's going to matter that much in this tavern that we're in. Second of all, we're going to change the map just a smidge. Let's see. First of all, I don't like the green, although it's better than the gray. So let's go to our grid. Change the color of the grid. Oh, that's not even the grid. Interesting. So we're going to change this. This should be 100. There we go. Alright, so no matter what we do, we'll just turn off the grid because this is what was on there in the first place. It was not a fancy grounds thing. Alright, so here's our map. 
First of all, let's read the note, shall we? An eager crowd watches your fight with rapt attention. Maybe not that rapt, huh? Bets are being taken. Whenever you miss an attack, rotten vegetables are flung at you. Roll a d20 against your AC. If a rotten projectile hits, the next attack on you is made with advantage. If you win, gain 50 gold in addition to any of the loot. Nice. You know we're going to win. Of course. But of course. Alright, speaking of, but of course, we are not blessed. But I'm going to go ahead and put... Add um, fruit attack on miss. Hit equals disadvantage on next attack. All right, so it says whenever you miss an attack, so that would be all three of us would get this lovely little thing. Um, so we go shift over control C, boom, get rid of his hashtag blessed, add another, boom, effects plus, boom. There we go. All right. He also has halfling. I did spell it right. Luck. Rewall ones, baby. All right. Oops. Click. So that's cool 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 it says um whenever you so not any person in the fight so it's it's not um so the bad guys can miss all they want not fair but hey this is dnt who says it has to be fair so we're gonna go ahead and stretch this out move it over try something a little different this time and then we're gonna go Toggle toolbar, shrink to zoom to fit. Boom. There we go. So there's our thing. And we have, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18. So this looks pretty darn square to me. Slash DIE 1D18. So there's two of them. So we're going to do 4D18. The first guy is the first two. So the first one is three. One, two, three. One down. One. Boof. Next one is six. Four, five, six. And 16 down. So that's 18, 17, 16. Boom. This is three down, actually. No, it's one down, yep. For, uh, so he's in one, not the one down. All right, perfect. So there's our thugs. We then say, we're going to add it here. There it is, boom. So we close it. <gasps> they go away. That's right. You open it up again, and then you click downer. And what that does is it adds it to breaks the fancy grounds. And then it adds it to the, the uh, combat tracker. We make them visible. And now they're also on the map. Boom, boom. So, where are you, you say? Well, that's a good question. So I'm going to say our folks, there is a 70% chance that our friends are all together. So, boom. 34. So they're all together. So let's see where they are. We're going to go instead of 4d8, we're going to do 4, 2d18, 5 and 5. So we'll start with our sidekick. Throw him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're all at this table right here. 
boom. Bion. And Torador. Boom. All right, we're going to zoom in a little bit so we can see. Put them on in a chair. Is this important? Absolutely not. Is it important to me? Yes, it is. All right, so boom, there we go. We have our fight ready to be set up. And if we win, we will get 27 gold. 27 gold. Plus the 50 that we win, because the people watching will be rich. We'll be able to retire. Who cares about Shadzar at that point? We will just live forever in this town. Maybe even at the Cloven Shield. We'll buy the Cloven Shield with our 27 gold. All right. So now that everybody's nauseous watching the stream. This is where we'll stick it. Fill it up. We don't need that hole that side because our, everybody's here. So we've rolled our initiatives. We are ready to go. Starting with Ricklin. All right, Ricklin. He's going to whip out his short bow. Sees this guy making a move on Fion. Pulls out his, the guy pulling out his dagger, getting ready to jump on a table and attack. So he's going to shoot first. Wha-bam. That is a hit. Whoopsh. Okay. Total of four damage. And he is then going to move up to the guy. Oof, what is this? His speed is only 25, so he can't actually get there this turn. So, five, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. He can't get to this guy either. So he's actually just going to chill. He's just going to wait and let them close in on us. Okay. Um, actually, I take that. Yeah, that's good. Now, if I own, it's only two thugs. Not worried about it. He's going to stand up, knock the chair goes flying as uh, he sees Ricklin shoot this guy with an arrow. He's going to stand up and move around the table. So he has a charge attack, but it has to be in a straight line. This is not a straight line, sadly. So he can't do his charge attack, but he can still punch him in the face with his flail. So these three, he's got his shield out now. As he grabs his shield, he stands, whips out his uh, flail. The uh, three chains, these big spiked balls on the end as he gets ready. He's walking around the table, just strutting over there, swinging. Getting them all swinging in, in concert. And then he comes over and tries to smack this thug. And hits. Bam. So the, the chains go lashing out. These spiked balls. Max damage go crashing as they wrap around his neck. And hit him in the face and the shoulder. And this guy is not looking very good. And he's hurt. <laughs> See what I did there? He's not looking very good. He's hurt. Okay. Anyway, so here's a thug boy, number six. Pull it down just a little bit. He has pack tactics. He has a mace and a heavy crossbow. All right, so this is this guy down here. He's going to move closer. So he sees his friend being attacked. He has pack tactics. So even though he's a thug, he likes his friend. He's going to move up to here and shoot Fion. Well, just for argument's sake, we're going to say 80, 80%, 15%, 5%. 
Fion it is. All right, bam. Heavy crossbow, don't have to worry about range. As the patrons are screaming and cheering on, cheering him on as he's making his bets. Thank you. He misses whoosh, as the bolt goes slamming into the wall, shattering against the wall, um, stone wall behind him. Torador. All right, so Torador sort of looks longingly at his food, sad that he's going to have to miss some food stuffs. So he's going to stand up and he's going to go ahead and lash out with his sling. He's not really worried about the guy up here. Because he knows Fion has it. So that is a hit with a 22 total. So the bolt, I mean the little bullet goes flying. Stone slams into his throat. So he takes six points damage, more like his shoulder. Six points damage and too much. Boom, it hits him. So far, none of our people have missed. No fruit flying this round. Ha ha ha. Alright, so this guy gets hit with his arrow. <laughs> And slammed with this flail and it's seeing spots in his eyes as this huge hippodon is there towering over him. But uh, he's going to take out of his mace, stick with a big clumpy rock tied to the top of it, and it's just going to slam it into him. He can get two melee attacks. So here we go. Whoosh, swing number one is a 19 on the die as it slams into Fion. Boom. And then he follows up max damage. Follows it up with a backswing that misses as the arrow sinks into him. So not bad, Thug One. Showing a little... Getting a little of uh, the action in there. Before he dies. That's right. He's, he's going to die. Alright. So here's the expert. He's going to step up. Five, here. Let me move it. The right way. Instead of just. Being all willy nilly. He's going to move over to here. Why are you doing that? Sven. Why didn't you just attack from where you were? Calm down. You'll see. Just relax. He's going to attack with his short sword. Whoopsh. Three. It's not going to do it. Eight is a miss. However, for his bonus action, he's then going to help. Um, he does not have the help action on his sheet. So, let's go ahead and open up our conditions. Our effects, I mean. I have a lot of effects, so it takes just a second as we get the blue circle of waitingness. There it is. Boom. See? Just when you were getting all upset and being impatient. So we come here and we go to HIP. Help. Gonna drop it onto Torador. So he is helped because he's uh, my sidekick Ricklin is harassing Thug Six, trying to s slab stab into him and stuff with his short sword. He's failing and missing, but it's enough to distract him to give Torador advantage. Fion, in the meantime, grunts. <laughs> as he's struck with this mace. And sort of growls. <sighs> he swings down his flail at the thug. Whoa! He, he dodges out of the way, slams as the flail goes flying past him. All right, so now it's Thug Boy 
So he wanted to go help his friend. But he's got this little Ricklin halfling dude in his face. So he missed. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He couldn't get there this turn anyway. So he's just going to turn and attack Ricklin. I'm going to say there's a 90% chance he'll just turn and attack his Ricklin. Yep, he did. All right, so he drops his crossbow, clang, clang, clang on the ground, pulls out his mace, whoosh, 17 on the die is a hit. Bam, slams into Ricklin as Ricklin stumbles back a little bit, and he follows up with a backswing, also a hit. Boom, Ricklin is feeling the pain at this point in his life. Taking 12 points of damage in one turn as the thug whips around, slam, slam with his mace. Leaving big old welts here crack as, uh, as he's hitting the side. Probably broke one of his ribs. Ricklin... <laughs> Starts breathing shallowly. Torador doesn't like this. So he's going to lash out with his staff sling. He already has advantage because it was added to him. So let's see. See if we can get a crit. No crit, but definitely a hit. As this, the, bolts, the uh, bullet slams into the thug. Bam. Max damage. Boom. 10 points of damage. Oh, hey, Fion missed. That's right. So, fruit time. Let's see if the fruit hits him. His, um, it says you just roll for d20 against your AC. Yeah. So, in order to hit Fion, they had to roll pretty darn high. Because Fion has... Oh, I thought I said that there. 18 AC. So, 11 is not going to hit. Alright, so Torador hit. Now it's back to Fion's enemy. Da -da -da. He hit him before. Let's see if he can hit him again. So the fruit comes flying, misses Fion, but the mace follows up and slams into him. Boom. Oof, max damage. All right, so now Fion's starting to get a little hurt. We thought these thugs were going to be a walk in the park. Oof, he gets a crit. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, things are not looking very good for our heroes. Looks like we are going to have to pull out some spells. We were trying to save it for later, but... Fion is now down to 15 out of 39 hit points. So... As we start the top of round six, the sidekick, who is only at three hit points left, he is going to try his stab with his short sword. Whoa! 16 is a hit. As he hits, sword slices across the... Uh, chest of the thug and now he's going to disengage using his cunning action so he's going to go five he's going to use his bonus action to help ten and no i'm sorry cunning action is his bonus action so he's going to take off over here um, he's actually going to go like this and then run behind his friend. Trying to get some cover. Behind his own his friend, little halfling friend. Alright, so Fion's feeling a little hurt. Um, what does he want to do? Does he want to heal himself? Does he want to just try to bang this guy to the floor? 
Um, or does he want to try to help everybody? He's going to try to help everybody. So let's go ahead and do a bless. So right now you go up here to where it says target friendly units. Click. And now he has... Corridor and Fion. Um, that's right, because he is not considered a friendly unit. There we go. So now all three of them here is are targeted. And then you just go boop. Now we all have a bless effect. Hashtag blessed. All right. So, oops, I did it twice by mistake. I meant to close it. All right. So we'll fix these real quick. All right, so she stands there taking a breath <sighs> as uh, the uh, breathing through his little hippopotamus nose and uh, says a pr silent prayer uh, and uh, the holy symbol on his shield glows a bit uh, and then it extends to him uh, as this spectral breastplate appears over him and his two halfling friends. And that is all he can do, because I don't have any kind of bonus action. Lay on hands is a full action. So here we go. He is going to move up. He still wants to help his friend. All right, so we have a couple choices here. His friend is here. Let me make sure I'm reading pack tactics correctly. Thug has advantage on an attack roll against a creature if at least one of the allies within five feet of the creature. Um, so he dropped his crossbow already, so he just has his mace. Um, so he's actually, instead of moving that last space, yeah, he is. He's so he's going to move all the way up. Use his action to to move as a dash action, and they're both going to double up on the big hippo man. They figure if they take him out, take out the big guy, just like prison. Take out the big guy first, and the other ones will respect. All right, I don't know what that was. Sorry, no disrespect intended, and I apologize for my weirdness. All right, Torridor, here we go. So he takes a look at them both, boom, boom, uh, realizes that uh, the guy who just moved up look looking pretty sad. He's been hit a couple times now, so he's going to finish him off. Here we go. With the bless, watch this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, see, nice little plus one. It's all right, I'll take it, I'll take it. And the bolt, the bullet slams into him, and it is enough to take him out. So boom, the uh, as he turns the corner, has the short sword out, and makes eye contact with his friend. Bam! He gets hit in the side of the head with another sling bullet, uh, and and sort of stumbles for a second, drops the short sword. And then just clumps, slumps down to the floor. Or clumps to the floor, really just depends. Um, and that was Torador, our friend. Still hasn't moved. Still looking at his food. Hoping this will end quickly so he can get back to it before it gets too cold. But it's only been 30 seconds, so we're okay. All right, so the thug sees his friend go down, and he's mad. He's upset. He doesn't like this. Wonders why the hippo man didn't hit him, but then doesn't spend too much time in contemplation as he lashes out, wham, slams into him, 
and Fion has to concentrate on the spell on hashtag best, and he makes it as the thief swings one more time, trying to get past that stinking shield. He is not able to clang this time. Uh, now Fion is done praying, and he's ready. He's focused. Top of the next round. Here we go. Maybe. There we go. All right. Rickland. All right, so he's still hurt. Um, so he's going to move on up and around. He only has one bonus action, so he's going to use his regular action. That was his move. And then his regular action, he's going to use it to dash. And he still has his bonus action, so he's going to help Fion. So again, we've already got our help here. We just drag it over to Fion. Boom. Now it is Fion's turn. Click on Fion, clear his targets. Because he's not attacking his friends, he's attacking the thug. So, here we go. He's just swinging that flail one last time. So now he's just calm. He's t in tune with his deity. He's feeling blessed. He's feeling good. He's got his f little new friend right there. Bam! Slams into and hits him. His, uh, the thug. And... One of the balls slam into the guy, knocking him a little bit sideways as it hits his shoulder. The other two go flying past. Uh, second one is scraping him a little bit. And Fiona's is just there, rock solid, just staring at the guy. Blood comes streaming down from where he got hit uh, with the short sword. Uh, it's a little disconcerting as the thug sort of realizes there's three against one now. Uh, as before he even realizes what's happening, oof, automatic miss. Boom. So I'm going to say he goes, misses, as the sing bullet slams into the pitcher on the table. Psh, beer goes flying, ale goes flying all over the place, spilling all over the top of the table and onto the floor, and a big sticky mess. And he gets slammed with fruit. So we're going to go ahead and pull up our things here. If we go dis, disadvantage attack, that is what he has. So we'll add it to Torador. Boom. It's only going to last one round. So we'll take it off at the end of the next round. So he's desperate. Um, he has nowhere to go unless he tries to climb over the table. So he's just going to try to take Fion. Fion is hurt. He's been slamming Fion with his mace as he tries one last time. Bam! He slams into the armor. Chink! But it's just not enough to gain purchase as he tries again. That one is enough. So... Uh, Fion grunts, the first one hits, and the th he slams into him again. One damage, not enough to take down this big hippo guy. So the thug sort of sighs. <sighs> Hangs his head a little bit because he knows he's done for. And speaking of being done for, Sidekick slams into him with his... Stabs him in the leg with his sword. Boom. Is it enough? It is not enough. He's still up. So he's also going to help. Go back to help. He's going to give Fion another advantage as he's just harassing. And... Uh, tr um, pushing and then 
splashing some of the beer that spilled all over the table onto uh, at this guy. Distracting him as Fion goes to finish him off with his flail. Boom, 24 hits. Let's see if this will do it. He needs to do six damage, and he does. He does double that. He does 12. So boom, with a hit and a cry. <laughs> the thug collapses and falls and dies. Uh, falls unconscious. Fion, being the paladin he is, will then reach down, administer aid to both of them, and then Ricklin will tie them up, tie their hands at least, and uh, take their weapons and escort them out as the bartender sort of shakes his head. But we get our 77 gold, baby. 27 for defeating them and 50 because of the bets that were made. We're going to minimize this. Minimize, right click and minimize. So that puts a little symbol here. So we can now open this whenever we want. There's Ricklin. Eh, eh, little sidekick dude. All right, now. Um, open up our party sheet. Give us our gold, man. 77, that's 78. So finally, we get to We've had that one extra gold since like the very first encounter, I think. Something like that. It's been a while. All right, so. We are finished with the encounter phase, and we're actually going to leave it there for tonight. Thank you for hanging with me. Like, subscribe, comment if you have questions. If you want to know what happened before, watch the other videos. If you want to know any clarification about my own, or uh, Torador, feel free to ask uh, and watch for Sven Zone 8. Um, this is sort of a as-needed type thing. I don't have a set time for when I do Sven Zone solo. So you're going to just have to subscribe, and um, then you'll be able to catch them. You'll be notified if you hit that little bell button every time that I post a new Sven Zone out, uh, Sven Zone. Um, do a bunch of other stuff check me out on Twitch check me out on YouTube but whatever else you do enjoy the rest of your day